Tonight's drink is a classic from the Big Apple itself, a Manhattan. You take one and a half ounces of bourbon, three quarters of an ounce of sweet vermouth, and a couple of little shakes of bitters, and add a maraschino cherry, and you have a classic from New York, a Manhattan. Oh, beautiful. Now, a Manhattan uh, was supposedly invented in 1874 in the Manhattan Bar uh, by none other than um, Jenny Jerome Churchill to celebrate the election of Samuel Tilden as governor of New York. Now, the odd thing about this story is that at the time of his election, Jenny Jerome Churchill was in Blenheim Palace in England giving birth to her child, Winston Churchill. So that's not a true story about how it was created. The other um, story is that it possibly was created by a Supreme Court justice by the name of Thorax. Well, it turns out there was never a su Supreme Court justice in the United States by the name of Thorax. So no one's really sure how a Manhattan was created. But it is the elegant symbol of the city and of a very sophisticated cocktail. So cheers. This is Lander Smith from Sense Memory welcoming you again to a, another uh, Friday evening of cocktails and uh, cologne and perfume reviews. So now tonight we're going to be exploring something that is really supremely popular in the community. It is considered by many to be a classic, a masterpiece, and we're going to explore that uh, aspect of it and um, a few other things about this particular uh, uh, fragrance, and it is none other than the very famous um, Dreamer by Versace. Now, the Dreamer by Versace uh, was first uh, introduced to the marketplace in 1996, so it's been around for quite a while, and um, I couldn't find out who the nose was uh, behind it. It is an oriental fougere, and uh, the notes consist of, the top notes are lavender, and citruses and sage. The middle notes are carnation, tobacco, rose, and uh, geranium. And the bottom notes are fir, tonka bean, and vetiver and cedar. Now I'm going to read to you my review that I wrote about it about two years ago and uh, then we'll discuss how I feel about it today. Um, the Dreamer by Versace has the, for the longest time eluded me. The scent has always reminded me of something I could never quite put my finger on. Clouded and veiled, it teased my memories and laughed at my stumbling block that kept me from finding the key which would open it up to me. In the past, when I would spray it on my skin, smell so familiar, and I would smile and enjoy it but still not connect. I connect in that way that makes a fragrance special to me. All that changed today. This morning, I pulled my gorgeous bottle of the Dreamer out of the back of the lineup in my fragrance cabinet and looked at it. It really is very beautiful with the embossed Versace Medusa on it and the clever gold and black cap that you don't remove but simply press down to spray. Looking like an eau de cologne bottle from the toilette of a long forgotten 19th century Sicilian prince. Who are, who are you, Dreamer? Why can't I decide if I like you or not? What is your mystery? I sprayed it on a tester strip and waved it under my nose, and boom, it all came together. 
I made my first trip to Rome in 1999, three years after the Dreamer was first introduced. And smelling it on paper, not on my skin, I recognized that this was the smell of Rome in that last year of the last part of the 20th century. Everyone that year in Rome must have been wearing it. The Dreamer, it permeated uh, the Via Veneto and the lobby of the Excelsior Hotel where I was staying. It was in the museums, in the cafes, and on the bus to Pompeii and on the train to Florence. It was everywhere. During my first week in Rome, the smell of the dreamer entered my memories and then somehow got buried. I understand it now, and I have fallen in love with this fragrance because it takes me back to Rome, and it feels like home. The dreamer opens with a dry lavender blast. Uh, that finds a warmth in a mandarin orange notes and a dusting of clary sage. It recalls the mix of smells that one encounters in the Campo di Fiore in Rome around one in the afternoon when the morning odors of the fruits mingle with the heated afternoon scents of herbs and flowers. In the heart of the fragrance you find an interesting mix of those Campo di Fiore flowers and something extra in the rose incarnation. The geranium permeated by the smooth, rich tobacco. It reminds me of those wonderful tobacconist shops in Rome, where you go in to buy your bus tickets and you smell the rich aroma of boozy, unsmoked pipe tobacco mixed with the old woods of the walls of the broom. The perfumes of the man behind you mixed in with all of this, and it's magic. In the middle, it really warms up uh, cozy like a classic 1980s man fragrance in the best possible way that a man's fragrance can be. Up from the bottom notes comes the note that most connects me to Rome, and that is the fir note, which is so predominant uh, in this beautiful fragrance. It, it reminds me of the umbrella pines of the city, redolent with green resins and wonderfully bright and sharp. This note dominates the fragrance from the late middle through the dry down. There's a touch of tonka bean, which is ever so light, like a the cream on the top of a morning cappuccino. The vetiver and the cedar round out the notes and it all seems to seems like a lazy summer dreamer under the afternoon sky in Rome. The longevity of the dreamer is as immense as the length of the Roman Empire. After several hours on my skin it's still quite discernible and projects extremely well at about six feet for the first three or four hours. It is to be applied with a light finger, or you might find yourself overpowering those innocent bystanders around you. I am so happy I didn't give the bottle away when I first purchased it. The beauty of the bottle kept it in my cabinet. Dreamer by Versace proved to me that not all fragrances are love at first sight uh, or first sniff, but given time and the willingness to, re, uh, to revisit them, you might find lost key to your dreams. So that was how I felt about the Dreamer. Uh, about two years ago. Now it has been shoved back into the back of my uh, fragrance uh, cabinet and I pulled it out again to explore it to see how I felt and damned if it wasn't all the same story again of me not getting it. Uh, it somehow seemed generic and just like many other fragrances uh, of that era and it's just oddly familiar, or not oddly familiar, but boringly familiar. And so I put it on today, and I wore it for the whole day. I had people at work test it, uh, smell uh, what it smells like, and I got on right here. And I got the most interesting comments such as, oh, it's okay, it smells like a lot of other things I've smelled. Even uh, one woman at work said that it... Uh, smelled old lady and very um, powdery. It does kind of get a powdery vibe going on in there, but um, I'm not sure I feel about it the way I did when I wrote that review two years ago. And that's the interesting thing about perfumes and colognes and our journey that we take through them in discovering new ones. We sometimes, we sometimes find that the perfumes or colognes that we loved a few years back become ordinary in comparison to the new ones that we're, we're falling in love with now. So overall I would say it's a fine fragrance, but um, not for me a masterpiece. It's, it's serviceable, it's nice, but um, I wouldn't say it's a masterpiece, not in my book. But I would be interested to hear how you feel about it if you have the feeling that it's a great um, 
classic designer perfume or if it just falls in the middle of the road for you. Let me know in the, in the comments down below. I'm also going to put a, a link to my original review on my blog, Sense Memory, because there's also a story that goes with it, which is a thinly veiled description of my very first time in Rome. You might find that interesting. This is Lanier Smith from Sense Memory saying, remember, wear what you love and not what they say you should like. Cheers. Or as they say in Italy, chin chin. <laughs>